Migration is undoubtedly one of the most contested issues of the 21st century. One thing is certain. Anyone fleeing persecution in their country of origin is entitled to protection and safety. But the line is not always clear. And what happens when people don't have documents? And then, of course, there's the question of potentially dangerous people entering the country. The EU and the US want to better secure their borders, increasingly with the help of artificial intelligence and autonomous drones. But does AI really make borders more secure? And what does this mean for asylum seekers? The Poland-Belarus border. As one of the borders of the European Union, the crossing is notoriously difficult. Faisal Jahib tried to cross it and failed multiple times back in 2023, despite paying smugglers. There are a lot of cameras at the border, a lot of drones. Every one or two hours you see a drone. At about 5 p.m. you can see a helicopter checking the border. So when the border control or the police come, you have to pretend to be asleep. We were told to stay put and not move. If you do move, dogs could spot you or a drone will see you. So during that time, you have to sleep or sit. Despite tightened border controls, over a million people applied for asylum in the EU, Norway and Switzerland in 2023. Many EU countries are upgrading their border technology along the over 50,000 km external border. AI-controlled drones and robots could soon be introduced to fill any gaps. This border technology is being funded by the EU. For example, 3.7 million euros are provided for the research project Reaction. Their goal? An autonomous system for monitoring border areas. Airspace plays a major role in this. AI drones like these could soon be monitoring the EU's external borders. Equipped with thermal cameras transmitting live and sensors that recognize and automatically track people and cars. Anyone approaching a border will be reported to local officials. Drones are a really important piece to, to all of this because they've really stretched the border kind of into the sky and, and, and they've really allowed the state to be able to see a lot further than, than what you would be able to do with binoculars or other types of technology. A lot of them are, are, are unpiloted. Swarms of synchronized flying drones will monitor areas stretching several kilometers, all while maintaining close contact with one another. They collect data using video cameras and thermal imaging, as well as radar. The data is then collated and processed for border officials. And with their onboard AI, drones can now navigate any terrain, even without GPS. The drone receives a command to take off and navigates the programmed route. Then it will find something at kilometer 1.5, for example. The software detects a person on site. The drone will then issue a command to stop and alert the control center with a live image. But the drone needn't stop there. It could go as far as saying, flight system, follow this person. So far, the EU has only tested AI drones, like this AI drone in Bulgaria, this AI object recognition tool in Greece, or this underwater drone here, off the coast of Portugal. But aside from AI, there is a lot of other smart technology at the borders. The 185-kilometer border on the Evros between Greece and Turkey is being scanned in its entirety. Watchtowers here have radar, there are heat sensors and cameras, there is also position data from satellites and drones. This is evaluated in surrounding surveillance centers. The Border Protection Agency Frontex has remote controlled drones patrolling over the Mediterranean, which has many advantages for officials. The benefits are speed, admissibility in court, staff safety, and I can deploy my staff more efficiently. More effective monitoring of migration with the help of smart tech. Many politicians are welcoming this trend. And of course, AI is involved too. The EU is developing lie detectors with AI for screening new entries to the Union. 
software from the Eye Border Control project analyzes facial expressions of test persons. A journalist from the US web magazine The Intercept carried out the experiment on herself, replying truthfully to 16 questions posed by the AI. The software considered four of them lies and flagged her. But while research into eye border control has been discontinued, a successor is in the pipeline. An AI assistant developed for the German Federal Office for Migration and Refugees has been more successful. Since 2022, it's helped check the origin of asylum seekers arriving without ID. It analyzes an asylum seeker's dialect, matching them to a specific region. This is meant to help determine whether someone is granted asylum or not, but there's been some criticism. It's not the only AI tool being used here. Interview transcripts are also checked by AI, sounding the alarm if statements relevant to security are discovered. Case workers are notified and pass on relevant information to the police if necessary. So in this case, AI acts only as an aid to officials. The final decision on what to do about a flagged individual is still left to an actual human. The drones we mentioned earlier are also meant to identify suspicious patterns and pass on the information, but are they really able to do that? So does it work? Yes. Has it been shown to work independently from the platform? Yes. Can two unmanned vehicles coordinate with each other? Yes. Can these unmanned vehicles, regardless of their number, act as a swarm controlled automatically from the control center? Yes, it all works. AI can give recommendations on how to deal with people, but that's a contentious issue. What's important to me personally is that the recommendations remain recommendations, i.e. that there are people behind the AI somewhere. People looking at things very closely who have a good foundation, a recommendation perhaps, but who should of course be able to deviate if deemed appropriate. To provide exact data, that's currently the task of the AI drones. But critics fear that it won't stop there, that AI will start making decisions on how to proceed. With data provided by drones, motion detectors and fingerprint sensors, AI systems can accumulate, evaluate and pass on uncontrolled mountains of data. And that affects anyone who crosses the border. Collecting things like facial recognition scans, movement, uh, different other types of biometric data, um, any kind of uh, data that's collected at the border. A lot of it is very sensitive and we also don't know where it's going or what kind of purposes it's being used for. This kind of slippage happens a lot already in immigration where, for example, you collect data for one purpose and then all of a sudden you realize that it's been shared with law enforcement or with another entity. Just like in the EU, the US-Mexico border is going high tech. Here too, AI will be implemented. People still come, they just go through more dangerous terrain, which actually then can lead to loss of life. AI experts and human rights activists are calling for binding rules on AI surveillance. Why do we not have a moratorium, for example, on robodogs or AI lie detectors or unmanned drones with tasers, right? Like that should not even be developed in the first place. In my opinion, an ethical debate is really overdue here. There are already initiatives to regulate artificial intelligence more strictly, but systems that collect sensitive data at borders, for example, have been so far exempt. There is a huge culture of secrecy around the use of technology in general, but especially in militarized um, locations. When they are used to assess uh, a humanitarian concern, then this, the, the purpose of this secrecy um, falls, um, and, and this needs to be accounted. Artificial intelligence can now also predict how many people will be displaced from a conflict zone, for example. The technology could be useful for the work of aid organizations and governments. We took a closer look at the tool Foresight. Forcefully displaced by war, poverty or natural disasters and seeking a better life, people aboard unseaworthy vessels in the Mediterranean are now part of a new forecast. IBM and the Danish Refugee Council created an AI tool called Foresight to predict how much displacement is likely to occur in the next one to three years. 
It uses leverages open source data from credible sources, typically UN, World Bank, and and, uh, and so on, uh, and and takes some of the, all the historical data, twenty five years of historical data on on more than one hundred and forty different uh, indicators. The AI has been trained using historical data drawing on past conflicts. Now it looks at ongoing conflicts and predicts how many people might be forcibly displaced over the next one to three years. Currently, the tool is tracking situations in 26 countries. While it has been scaled since it was launched in 2019, it comes with its pitfalls. One of the limitations of these tools is that the ability to predict a situation like Gaza, uh, October 7 happening and, and, and the subsequent uh, uh, war uh, is something that's very difficult for these tools. It might be better uh, or useful to have it now as, uh, as it tends to be quite good at capturing how after these initial shocks, ma major changes in the situations, it, it's typically quite good at understanding how, can, how does displacement unfold from, from here. Yet human rights groups fear that AI migration forecasts could encourage anti-immigration sentiments, having serious consequences for people in need. These tools can be used to preemptively um, or disproportionately push back on, on migration and deny people on the move uh, uh, their right uh, and their, their ability to access new territories. IBM, who is one of Foresight's developers, declined to comment on the matter. The Danish Refugee Council says their tool was created to support migrants and refugees and tailor aid campaigns to the scale of conflicts using open source data that respects individual rights. Predictive forecast tools are likely to expand to more countries and conflicts. Bird rights groups are urging governments and the EU to protect individual privacy of displaced people on the move and address risks even from open source data, such as class, gender, and racial biases. Still, experts warn that artificial intelligence alone will neither solve nor prevent migrant crises. There's far more to migration than borders, after all. What do you think? Let us know in the comments. And I'll see you next time on Shift. Mm -hmm.